Hi everyone. In this lesson, we are going to look at something called reverse ratios. Okay, so um, it's a bit like the ratios that we've done already, ratios one, two, and three. So it's pretty useful if you are not familiar with ratios to go and watch those videos first. Um, but if you've been in lesson, you will understand what reverse what what ratios are. Um, let's start off with an example. Uh, to remind ourselves about the usual ratios. Okay, Jim is baking a cake. The recipe suggests using four eggs for six cakes. He has 20 eggs. How many cakes can he bake? So this is, um, this is a revision. This is not reverse ratios. This is work that we've done already. Um, and if you're new to this, like I said before, uh, it's worth watching the YouTube videos on ratios one, two, and three. So first thing we need to remind ourselves is about the layout so what are the two things we're talking about we're talking about eggs and we're talking about uh, cakes okay so eggs to cakes and then we put the numbers in the right place so four eggs make six cakes but he's got 20 eggs so because 20 and eggs go together we put 20 underneath here so then we look at the number that turns 4 into 20. So what number turns 4 into 20? 4 times something is 20, the answer is 5. That's our magic number. And whatever we do to this side, we do the same to the other. Okay? So that means that Jim is able to bake 30 cakes with his uh, 6 eggs. And this makes sense to me because with 4 eggs, the number of cakes is slightly more than the number of eggs okay so with this is slightly more if I if I got a wrong number so if I had something like a hundred or or if I had something like um, five as the answer here I would know that should sell a, send alarm bells ringing I should know that that is not the right answer because ratios are proportional to each other okay anyway that's not the that's not today's lesson today's is reverse reverse ratios so um, I hope you are familiar with this all right so the layout is very very important all right so E for eggs C for cakes put the numbers in the right place look at the relationship between 4 and 20 and if you remember from my lessons if you can't go this way then go this way okay uh, and then you worked out the correct answer here right so this is a this is ratios 1 I think this is ratios 2 right nice and easy um, let's take a look at today's lesson, which is reverse ratios. It takes four cows six hours to chew through, through some food. How long will it take four cows to chew through the same food? All of our questions start off with the layout. Okay, what are the two things we're talking about here? We're talking about cows and we're talking about time. Okay, yeah, we are talking about food, but the food is related to the time as well. Okay, so it takes four cows six hours so I'm gonna put time here so we put the four underneath the cows because four cows take six hours to chew through some food how long will it take eight cows so we're gonna put eight here now if we were to use the same rules on ratios with that we've just done with this particular question the answer wouldn't make sense so let's let's do it the wrong way first okay so what number turns four into eight the answer is two times 2 that makes 12 now does it honestly make sense that if four cows took six hours to chew through some food so if I double the number of cows would it take them longer that doesn't make sense does it because if I'm doubling the number of cows the amount of time should actually half right so for example if you are uh, painting a room and it takes one person um, th uh, one person six hours to paint a room if there's two of you it should take you half the time shouldn't it so ratios wouldn't work in that particular question okay so you've got to be very careful when you read a question to know if it's ratios one two or three or if it's reverse ratios so if it is reverse ratios there's a little trick I'm going to show you on what you need to do um, let's start again with this question we we'll start with the layout, okay? It takes four, hour, four cows six hours, 
so that's time, to chew through some food. Eight cows are going to take a certain amount of time. Now, we know this is quite an easy question because I'm starting, you know, the, the beginning questions I give you are quite simple. So we know that this is going to be half, that this should be three. We know that because we're doubling the number of cows, the amount of time should half. It should go in the opposite direction. That's why this is called reverse, reverse ratio. But sometimes it doesn't work um, all the time. So I'm going, to give you, I'm going to give you a set of rules. Well, actually, just one rule. Very, very quickly. Very, very easily. When you get a reverse ratio and you've done your layout, the very easy thing you need to do, very simple, is you just do this. You draw a line like this and you make this into a fraction. So you do 4 divided by 8 and then you multiply it by the number that doesn't have a bottom, doesn't have a fraction, doesn't have a denominator. So it becomes 4 over 8 times 6, okay? Or you could do 6 over 1. When we, when we multiply fractions, we multiply the top numbers and multiply the bottom numbers. So 4 times 6 is 24, and 8 times 1 is 8, and 24 divided by 8, the answer is 3. Now this one, you could have worked out quite easily uh, because you used your common sense, right? We're doubling the number of cows, so we're going to half the number of hours. But sometimes, if you use your common sense, uh, doing it in your head doesn't always work. But this rule, this rule, drawing a line, turning it into a fraction, will never let you down. Okay, let's take a look at another one um, where it's not possible to do in your head but if you use my rule, you'll be able to figure it out. Three farmers plough two fields in 15 hours. How long will it take five farmers to plough the two fields? So this is a little bit confusing because they've given you three different sets of numbers. They've given you three farmers, they've given you two fields, and they've given you 15 hours. This thing here is just to trick you. This stays the same. So we're not worried about this. These two are the ones we need to focus on. So in our layout, we put the number of farmers and we put the number of hours where you can put time. It doesn't really matter as long as you know what the, um, what the letter stands for. So three farmers are going to take uh, 15 hours to, pl uh, to plow the two fields. How long does it take five farmers? Okay, now you can try and do this in your head, um, but my guess is that it's not going to be very easy to, for you to do. But this is why my method, my layout, can never let you down. So if you remember what you need to do, you just turn these two into a fraction. And you multiply it by the one that doesn't have a denominator. So it becomes 3 fifths times 15. So 3 times 15 is 45. And then this is 5. 45 divided by 5 is 9. So this will be 9. That means it, 5 farmers will take 9 hours. 15 hours is quite long, I hope. I'm pretty sure they'll, they'll have breaks. Okay, So don't worry. Uh, I just made this question up. So obviously, uh, as you know, uh, the numbers aren't always accurate. But this is how you would do it. Remember, you can turn the ratio, the two numbers that are below each other, uh, above and below each other, you turn it into a fraction, you multiply it by the one that doesn't have a denominator. Let's take a look at another example, but before we move on, let's just check that this answer makes sense, okay, because we need to double check. So, if three farmers are taking 15 hours, more farmers should take less time, and th this does definitely make sense to me, so I'm pretty sure this is the correct answer. Okay, so three people take four hours to paint eight walls. How long will it take two people to paint the same number of walls? Okay, so let's lay this out. Um, what are we talking about? We're talking about the number of people and we are talking about the time. I know, again, they've given you they've given you a number here, which is probably to confuse you, but we're not gonna we're not gonna put this into our layout because they've said the same number of walls. So this is a, what we call a constant. This is gonna stay the same. So we're talking about the number of people and we're talking about the number of hours, or you can put a T time, okay? So three people are taking four hours to paint the eight walls. How long will it take two people? Now, common sense tells me that if three people are taking four hours, then the number of people, if I take one person out, this is going to be more, isn't it? 
All right, this is going to be more. So that's where you know that the answer can only be achieved by using reverse ratios. So as we looked in the last example, this is what you do. You do a line here, you do 3 divided by 2, and you multiply it by the one that doesn't have a bottom, a, re uh, a denominator. So it's 3 over 2 times 4. 3 times 2 is 12. Divided by 2 is 6, and that makes sense. Two people will take a little bit longer than three people. Okay, here's another one. This one's a little bit complicated, um, and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, so let's read it. It's a, it takes an aeroplane five hours to fly from London to New York at 600 miles per hour. How long would it take if the aeroplane flew at 800 miles per hour? So common sense tells me that this is going to be reverse ratios because we're speeding the aeroplane up, which means this needs to go down. Okay, so let's, let's lay this out. Uh, time and speed. Okay, this is speed. This is time. It takes five hours. I'll tell you what, we'll make this H. Okay, just to, so there's no confusion. It takes five hours to fly from London to New York at 600 miles per hour. How long would it take if the aeroplane flew at 800? I've done this uh, question on purpose. I've given this question on purpose to you because I want you to understand all the, uh, the examples we've seen before. Uh, the bottom number was always on this side. Okay, but in this question, the bottom number is on this side. So as long as you lay it out, the rule is still the same. So we turn this into a fraction. We multiply it by the one that doesn't have a bottom. But before we do that, common sense tells me that this number has got to be less than 5. If the aeroplane is going faster, surely the amount of time it takes to travel is going to be less. So I've got an idea in my head of what I think this is going to be. But let's, let's make this work out. So 600 divided by 800, 600 divided by 800. Now before we multiply large fractions, it's always good practice to simplify them first. So I can divide top and bottom by 100 and make this 6 over 8. I can simplify this further by, turning, by dividing top and bottom by 2 and turning this into 3 over 4. Okay, so 3 quarters, it becomes 3 over 4 times 5. So 3 times 5 is 15 divided by 4. So this doesn't make much sense to me because it's a fraction so we need to turn this into a decimal. Um, so let's do this over here where we've got a bit of space. So we're going to do 4, 15. How many 4's are there in 1? Can't do that. How many 4's are there in 15? The answer is 3. Is there a remainder? Yes there is. And if there is a remainder we put a 1 and a 0 sorry, a dot and a zero. Uh, the remainder was three. We put the remainder here because four times three is 12. And the remainder is three. How many fours are there in 30? There are seven. And then we've got another remainder. If there's another remainder, we put a zero here. And um, what was the remainder? The remainder was two because seven times four is 28 plus the two makes the 30. And then how many fours are there in 20? The answer is five. So... 3.75 is a good answer to give, 3.75 hours, or you can give it as 3 hours, 3 hours, 45 minutes. And I'll tell you why in a second. Because 0.75 is 3 quarters of an hour. So it's 3 hours and then 3 quarters of an hour. And 3 quarters of an hour is 45 minutes. So you can give the answer as this. If the question says to give the answer as uh, in this sort of format, then you'd have to give it like this. Okay, so just think of it like this. If the answer was 3.5, three and a half hours is how you would write it. In the same way, 3.75, you could write like this. Sorry, something wrong with the pen. 3.75 could be written as three and three quarters. Okay, uh, that's a se separate topic. But the main thing is you're beginning to get the idea of the layout and how to get the answer from a reverse ratio. So I want you to try one now. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Um, let me read it with you for a second. So this question has got two different parts. So it's two different questions actually, or two similar questions, but they're both different parts. So four people can paint a fence in three hours. 
how long will it take six people to paint it? So straight away you need to think, four people paint it in three hours. If I get more people, it's, this is going to go less, isn't it? So you know what to do. So you know you're going to need to use reverse ratios for this one as well. And then how many people are needed to complete the job in one hour? This won't make sense to you unless you uh, lay it out on a bit of paper. Don't try to do this in your head. So if you think you've got the hang of this, you think you know what you're laying out, how to lay it out, go for it. If you're a little bit rusty, like I keep saying, go back, rewind the video, go back, the, the, watch the last five or sort of five minutes or so, and then try this out. So pause the video now, have a go, and then we'll meet back when, you're, when you think you're done, and then check your answers against mine. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go now. Four people, we're talking about people, we're talking about um, a single fence, so that doesn't change. And we're talking about the number of hours or the time. So four people, this is part A by the way. Four people take three hours. How long will it take six people? So we're going to put the six underneath the P. Remember, we just turn this into a fraction, multiply it like that. Four over six times three. You can simplify this and multiply, or this is this is quite a small fraction anyway. So four times three is twelve. Twelve divided by six is two. So that means if I've got more people painting the fence, less time it takes, the less number of hours. Okay, so I believe this the, this answer is correct. And if you got this one, brilliant, well done. Let's take a look at part B. How many people are needed to complete the job in one hour? So this part requires a brand new layout. And I'm going to do it in a totally different pen as well. So, four people, we're talking about people. We're talking about the fence being done in three hours. And we are being told that four people can paint this fence in three hours. How long, how many people are needed to complete the job in one hour? So this time, this number goes on this side of our ratios, but the rule still remains the same. Now I know from my from my uh, common sense that if four people can paint this single fence in three hours, and if we wanted the fence to be painted in one hour, we know four people can do it, so we need to increase the number of people. So I know that this number here has got to be bigger than this number here. Let's find out. 3 divided by 1 times 4, straight away I know the answer is 12. Okay, and that makes sense to me because um, I'm actually dividing this by 3 to make it 1, which means I need to do the opposite here. Okay, so don't worry about this method. As long as you use the method I've just taught you here and you use your common sense as well to make sure that the answer you've got fits in with what's happening in the actual question. So I hope this video was useful. Um, it might be worth watching this again uh, if you're still a little bit unsure, uh, but if you got the hang of this, well done.